from London, England, extracting the signal from the noise. It's the Q covering Discover 2015. Brought to you by Hewlett Packard Enterprise. Now your hosts, John Furrier and Dave Vellante. Okay, welcome back everyone. We are here live in London, England for HPE Discover. This is Silicon Angles, the Cube, our flagship program. We go out to the events and extract the signal from noise. I'm John Furrier, my co-host Dave Vellante. Our next guest, Scott Weller, is SVP and General Manager of HPE's Technology Services Support Group. Scott, welcome back. Cube alum, many times, every year. Great to have you on. Yeah, thank um, you. Usually on the, you're usually the first one on <coughs> every time, but now your schedule's packed. I, I made you're on the last wait day. this time. I'm sorry <laughs> we have more questions for you now on your last day. It'll be maybe better for us. Um, Welcome back. Thank you. Um, so give us the update from your standpoint. It's just every year more and more stuff's happening yeah. that requires services, especially the technology services. Mm -hmm. This year it's composable. Right. Dave and I were talking on the intro, you know, HP got it right with converged <laughs> infrastructure. You mm -hmm. know, right out of the gate. True. And back then, kind of people were scratching their heads, what's converged infrastructure? Mm -hmm. Looking back, it's mainstream now. Now you have the next bet on yep. composable. We like it, I love it a lot. Yep. Now customers are, are probably like, Oh my God, another new thing. So how are you guys doing right now with all the changes? Cloud's pretty clear, mm -hmm. no public cloud, good. Right. A lot of private cloud, so that's yes. been stuff you've been building out. Right. Now Composable, what's the update? So, um, like you said, a lot going on. We have, um, in, in, in a way, reinvented the company, um, which you don't do very often, right? But I think the uh, the companies that can reinvent at the right times are the ones that survive and thrive. And, uh, and in particular, pivoting uh, our strategy around these four transformation areas is really uh, is really important. And you'll see the implications of that play out over time, like you're seeing some of it now. But it really changes the way we think about our customers, what what their problems are, what we're here to do for them. And you're right, it's, uh, there's a huge service element in that. Um, in fact, uh, you could even say that a lot of that is service-led. And uh, so the transformation area work has led to probably 50 distinct solutions that are uh, in every way pan HPE. They involve, uh, you know, it's a pan portfolio, pan go to market kind of view on things. And so right now, you know, we have competitors that are um, single plays, you know, storage competitors, server competitors, um, solution competitors. And so we have to do the new, we have to do this new view on the world as well as continue to be a fierce competitor, right, in these in these single play environments. So, so that's uh, that's a, I would say a new challenge for us. Uh, but I mean, it's it's such yeah. an exciting time, and to see this, I'm actually very proud of what we've been able to do. It's really interesting. You certainly, for your memoirs, can put into the uh, the book this past couple of years, and certainly the the past year. I mean, mm -hmm. you had the operating as a split entity prior to the official date. Right. Huge IT track crossover. Yes. Huge. Uh, services, workforce, plus new hiring for the gaps you, we talked about last time. Yes. So congratulations on that, that's Thank really you. phenomenal. Yeah. Uh, I love to drill down on that. Um, but I want to get to the point you just mentioned, because this is interesting, At, in Vegas we talked about the services piece, because obviously the transformation mm -hmm. was laid out then. Same four pillars. Right. Um, now you're seeing a lot of meat on the bone. Mm -hmm. Even how the show's organized, it's yes. not by org chart, Right. it's by solutions. We see mm -hmm. you know, you know, how to run your government booth over right. here. That's not a division of HP, it's a solution, right. right? So tell us what's evolved. I mean, I love this services-led angle. Dave and I were just talking on the intro yeah. about IoT. Once you get on, into the network, the methodology for the customer depends on the customer. Right. How they want to get the data mm -hmm. as a function of what the device is. Right. Again, just a random example, but this is the, the new normal, the services-led yeah. infrastructure. It is, and you know, I can just tell you from the inside that that this is not architecture that you guys are seeing. I mean, this is real, you know, deep into the way the company not only operates and develops solutions and goes to market, but again, how do we think about what we're here to do for our customers? How do we want to show up in, in discussions with our customers? So, so this is a, you know, I, I wouldn't say that we're through that. I mean, we have a lot to learn, a lot to do. 
but this is this is definitely a reinvention, a rotation for us, and um, the reaction has been incredible. And like you said, we we made a conscious decision that we would show up here like that. Like it, you know, this is we're we're going to start to live what we really believe we need to do as this new company. So Scott, an indication of that it's not just architecture; it's real. Right. Would be how you get measured by customers. Mm -hmm. it, yes. And it used to be okay. The project's on budget, on time. Mm -hmm you know, successful, check. And now that's table stakes. Right. How, as you move toward these new four pillars, solution areas, are, are the ways in which you're measured changing? Right, so what, what we are seeing and experiencing is a shift from sort of like project, technical project-based uh, deliverables, and have you done that? to have you created the business outcome that I intended when I went down this path with Hewlett Packard Enterprise. So, uh, and those outcomes are, are you know, uh, contextual. They're unique, fairly unique to the, to the customer situation. And it can be anything from have you moved us to hybrid? Have you, have you shown us how we can be a high velocity IT shop? Have you, have you uh, brought DevOps? into our context and, and shown us how to be successful. So it's those kinds of things about, you know, are we, you know, ultimately, without the specifics, the question is, are we helping our customers succeed through IT? And, and then the, the specifics of that context will drive it, but that, that's really the difference. It's not about project outcomes, it's business outcomes. Well, that's a, yeah, right. a much more complicated equation for you for as sure. well, because you yes. can check tick off the items and of, of mm -hmm. the, you know, the, the earlier days, this is not what we delivered, and oh, the customer didn't exploit it you know, because right. of X, Y, Z, but yes. now they're holding you responsible for the business outcome. Yeah. So, how, so that basically talks to deeper business integration. How is yeah. that changing the way you go to market, your skill sets? Yeah. Well, you know, a few years ago there was a whole question of do I just sell a product and then kind of the customer's on their own to get some value out of it? Mm -hmm. And actually, for all of us as consumers, if we don't use a product, we don't, we don't know whether we got any benefit, obviously, and so the companies that make those products would really like us to use them, and, and, and so good things happen when you actually help customers realize the value of, of their investments with us. You take that to the next step and you say, you know, if you care about whether the customer actually got to what they were planning for, intending, by uh, working with us, that, that's a different mindset and it doesn't have to be contractual necessarily. It starts with a mindset and then you can write it into contracts and there are ways to do that and we're seeing some of that, but really more it's a, it's a mindset and, and what are we there to do for them. And, and yes, you, you, begin to, you begin to think about, well, you know, um, you know maybe this project, this, this deployment didn't really achieve what they wanted, what are we going to do about that together with the customer? One of the things that we talked about yesterday with some of the channel partners was this reinvention. Mm -hmm. It's blurring the lines between a VAB and a VAR and a reseller and a distributor. <laughs> right. And Carrie wow. Bailey was on from the cloud group and really yes. saying, hey, you know, we're just going to identify the value points and focus on that. But I want to ask you on, on, that, on that thread because now that brings up the conversation we had again in Vegas, which is there's so much work to do on the services side. It's almost ridiculous to think about it, mind blowing, almost like how many reference architectures there could be, how many right. uh, variations there could be. So we know you're busy <laughs> working away yeah, on that. Yeah. But also now the channel partners are there and there's, there's also the channel conflict. So how do you guys, because there's a lot of work to do, how do you separate what you guys are going to do within mm -hmm. HP mm -hmm. and go direct to the customers and or right. provide to the channel partners in the form of reference architectures because now they're taking the ball yeah. and going to the front lines as well. So it seems to be that's a nice area. Are you guys are managing that? What's the thoughts there? What's your vision? Yeah. So, you know, my, my belief is that actually simplicity is the better outcome. You don't want to have a buffet of, of reference architectures or even products. You, you know, you, I think our customers and our partners expect us to do our homework, segment the market, understand what business we're in, and have, you know, the, enough but no more in terms of products, use, reference architectures, and so on. That's part of being a thought leader in this industry. From there, you're right, it comes down to the kind of channel relationships you want, the kind of plays you want to run with the channel. In some cases, it means the channel does everything. In some cases, it means that the channel 
um, you know, does one piece of it and the direct is the other piece of it. Yeah. And we're so big and we're global, so we have all kinds of buyers. You know, and yeah. we have we have direct customers who buy direct from us for some things and actually work with partners for other things. So it's all of the above and we have to harmonize that. We have to rationalize that for sure. But and again, sometimes they might not have the capabilities, right? So well, it comes down to the balance between and, roles and delivery, and, right? And that's the and that's the other piece of it is the partners get really upset with us when we're not innovating. If if they can do everything that we do, then they wonder why in the world they're in our partner program. So so there is a point. creative tension, right? We're always going to be innovating. Sometimes that leads us down paths that overlap, you know, the forward leaning partners. Sometimes it it uh, works itself out. So. So, but that is a constant dance, and it's a good thing actually because our partners teach us a lot, uh, and it's and we learn a lot. It's good checks and balances, but yeah. you're also going to be an enabler, right? I mean, yes. you can leverage a lot of the work well, you're doing and just pass it on that's, that's, as you get into more of these converged that's and integrated. An expectation, yes. Yeah, yeah. And and you know the channel piece is interesting because the channel is going through a massive transformation like mm -hmm. everybody else. Yeah. Um, and you know, let's face it, most of the channel revenue today is moving tin, uh, and, yeah. and but that's changing. Yes. Rapidly, because right. that business is kind of going away. Yeah. Won't happen overnight. Yeah. So the lines are blurring. But my understanding, Scott, and from speaking in the past, is that the ch you're open to the channel white labeling your services. They they do that. I mean, we talked to many of your channel partners that are happy to do that, and you allow that. It doesn't have. You're not dogmatic mm -hmm. about it's got to be the HP brand. Can you talk about that philosophy? Yeah. Well, is that so, true? so I think that, that's uh, correct in that assertion. So, is that right? So or? generally, it's that that's not the way we kind of view the world. Um, we have a few what would be called partner branded programs, mm -hmm. um, and those are very um, very specific and targeted. Generally speaking, what we want to do is pour a ton of investment into innovation. And uh, we ask our partners uh, where there's, uh, there's, uh, you, you know, where we have clear innovation and clear leadership to sell our brands. So we authorize them to do that. We pay them to do that. We encourage them to do that. And we have multipliers on how they can earn with us. You know, the more for more model. Um, but in a few cases, we do we do uh, have a partner branded program, and and sometimes that has to do with geography. Sometimes it has to do with a product and the competitors that are that are in the market yeah. with that product. I see, okay, so, so it really is selective and you're really trying mm -hmm. to, to, to have that HP branded service, mm -hmm. but, the, the, but the, the partner can resell that service and make the market. The partner can that. resell and they can deliver against it yeah. as well. Um, yeah. And uh, again, we make it worth their while through our partner programs. Yeah, you guys have a great track record too with the channel. HP's got a great history there, yes. that's why I asked. But the, the innovation thing is what I was getting at, and I, so I got to ask you, since uh, Vegas, what's the top seller? What product is uh, working the most right now? Well, I mean, you know, I mean, I mean, kind of joking, but I want to kind yeah, of know where's the yeah. traction? What's the most what's hot? Yeah, what's hot? Well, uh, you know, you were there when we introduced proactive care, for yeah. example, three years ago. That's become possibly the fastest selling product in, in HP's history, and most of it is done through the channel. So here's a case where we're able to offer proactive insight. Uh, backed by analytics and reporting that most partners don't have either the time, the breadth, the visibility to do. And uh, again, that's where they said, hey, thank you, thank you for innovating Hewlett Packard yeah. Enterprise. We, we would like to take that to our customers. Composable services, what's going on there? It's news, right out of the gate, so it's a new announcement. Right, right. The IoT stuff, again, we love the yeah. IoT messaging. So, you got Aruba Wireless out there yeah. with, a thought, with a great leadership right. position. Right. So I'll take them in order. So, so first of all, composable. You, you know, um, what, uh, what all, what every ops and IT shop will know is that it, it's really hard to provision, right? It, yeah. It's it's labor intensive. It's it's uh, error prone. It's disruptive. Sometimes it's not very secure, depending on where you get your images and yeah. so from. And so, uh, with with uh, with Synergy, what we've done is we've said, look, we want to make provisioning happen at, at runtime. We want the gear to self-assemble. Why can't the gear kind of discover itself and self-assemble? That, that kind of makes sense, right? But, but nobody's done this, right? So we're really excited about that capability. And then on top of that, it has native exposure for this, this infrastructure's code paradigm. 
which now, now you begin to excite the developer community about this being a target, right? Versus yeah. the morass that they sometimes feel that IT is presenting back to them. So it's high velocity IT, it's in the paradigm that they want, and from an ops perspective, a lot easier to live with. I mean, the livability yeah. of Synergy versus conventional gear is so much better. So we've, we're trying to take the hassle factor out of being an ops person and also encourage a collaboration that eventually you know, DevOps is all about, but not everybody's there yet and, and, and it's going to yeah. take time. So we've just been discussing, John and I, all week whether Synergy is evolutionary or revolutionary. From yeah. a services perspective, you have right. a a good angle on that, yeah. Uh, yeah. and if it is evolutionary, what does it mean from a services perspective? Yeah. What's your take? Synergy, composable infrastructure that you've announced, evolutionary or revolutionary? And well, what are the services I mean, I think, implications? I mean, I think that could be a fun debate, I'm not <laughs> sure, but <laughs> I think, you know, for, 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 me, for me, I think it's going to feel quite revolutionary to customers, and that's the reaction we're getting. Uh, of course, we pull the analysts all through the, the development cycle about what do you think, and what do you think this is going to mean, and they're really excited. What's the sentiment? Are they weighing in on revolutionary? Oh, they're, uh, I, think, I think they would say it's revolutionary, and from a service Maybe perspective, <laughs> look. Yeah, what's the implication? Uh, you know, from a service perspective, on one level, it's no different than any other product. There are more, potentially more seams, or fewer seams for my business to, to kind of deal with on behalf of the customer, but it's also going to mean that we have the ability to now to kind of fulfill what I've laid out as our, our vision, which is we need to be about making sure that customers are successful through IT and do that over the long term, independent of market headwinds and independent of technology changes. And so this is, to me, it's an enablement of what we're trying to do generally, and then the rest of our service just wrap around it as, as they always do. Were you, was your team asked to help dog food with the split? And did you get paid oh, yeah. for that? <laughs> well, we were, well, yeah, we were, we were, we were all on the payroll at that time. Um, Good answer. But, uh, but, but yes, in fact, um, you know, we talk about how, like, in a couple of weeks, we had to build four thousand servers. Well, my team got involved with that. Why wouldn't we? Right, we have the expertise. Yeah. yeah. So, and it's a, great a lot use of my, case. and a lot of, yeah, a lot of my team were involved in the various, you know, behind the scenes aspects of it, and. But again, that's something to be proud of because now people look and say, wow, that's almost like a benchmark for what, how things should happen, right? And, uh, and, so, and, we, and we've actually made a business out of helping other companies do similar things, whether it's divestiture or, or merger. It's quite an accomplishment. I think it's worth capturing and documenting as a use case because yeah. yes. to do that at that scale, at that level of that, at speed, is really agile in its, yes. in its, form, in its purest, yes. non-dogmatic yeah. form. Yes. I mean, agile in terms of development, I get yeah. that, but to move yeah. that kind of scale yeah. in that it, way. You know, I think about it like uh, a man on the moon. In a decade, we will do X, Y, Z, and that's, you know, we, yeah. in one year, we are going to be two separate companies, and we did it. Awesome, well I got to get your take on the overall vibe. Actually, actually first, IOT, I want to get to IoT. that point. IOT so, is really an opportunity. Moonshots now being yes. kind of disaggregated, yeah. yes. opportunities there. So, so first of all, um, there are cycles, right? You know, mainframe, client, server, on, on and on. IOT, moving compute to the edge is, uh, is the, the latest cycle and it's going to last a long time because as much as we'd like to put in the sensors, there's a cost, right? If the sensors are all super smart, now they can't proliferate. So putting compute on the edge is a nice architecture, and Moonshot's a perfect vehicle for that. The, the thing that, uh, for, for the service business, there's, a, there's sort of an edge where I'm not going to take it further. In other words, the I true will, edge. The true edge. In other words, I will provide uh, support for the IoT aggregation, right? The aggregation yeah. point, the compute point. But people say, well, why don't you, you know, isn't, uh, isn't uh, you know, a uh, RFID tag just, uh, you know, part of the architecture? Well, yes it is. Well, I don't have people who can go into hazardous environments. I, I don't have people who are trained to go into medical facilities to, to, to go that last mile, right? So when it comes, <laughs> yeah, when it comes to We're just talking about supporting, this. Yeah, yeah, supporting right your services right from, from us, from Hewlett Packard Enterprise, It'll go, it'll go up to the compute layer or, or edge, and then we'll work with other people, and that'll be part of our overall big solution. Yeah. When you talk about 
big solutions like we might, you know, might be doing yeah. for an airline or for the health industry in general. So we yeah, we've been about advising this. people to define that edge. Yeah. 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 And, the, and, we, and we added one element to that, which is not only the, um, the, the provisioning of the labor and the, yeah. the training, is also power and internet. And yeah. certifications yeah, right. and yeah. yes, everything. Everything about that. So it's a very, it's a, it becomes a collaborative play. Like people say, well, why, don't, why wouldn't you want to do smart meters? Well, I don't have meter readers in my workforce, for example and it's yeah. all going to be automated anyway. So That could be phase two though. I mean, the reality now is that the addressable market now is the edge of the network, your true edge, and then yes. IoT everything. Yes, well, If you try true. to go outside the bounds of that true edge, as you were pointing out, yeah. you start getting into over your skis, yes. and you get into all these little fatal flawed tripwires. Well, not only that, but you know, we can't forget that the companies who build the sensors are quite interested in the value chain of all this too. Yeah. So this is where I think we'll meet in the middle, we'll collaborate, yeah. and, uh, and, and it's actually very exciting. I, in my past, I was involved heavily in telematics, and so I know the, oh, yeah. I know the drill, and, but I completely agree with this huge, huge opportunity. Mm -hmm. Well, you're interesting, that the point about meeting in the middle, that actually favors HP with the ecosystem play. Yep. Absolutely puts you guys I in right with I the agree. whole cloud. So yeah. interesting, we're kind of stitching this together in real time. We had a great segment on that, great, great visibility. Um, workplace productivity. I've been trying to figure out what the heck that, that transmission pillar is all about. Yeah. It's like, it's splendid, right? And yeah. you know, as a product guy, I'm trying to get a product out of it. But you got development, you got user experience. It seems mm -hmm. fuzzy to me. Can you clarify yeah. that for what that means from services? So, and, so uh, the very first and maybe the you know, blaringly obvious, part of that is mobility, right? And with our Aruba acquisition, we have, I, I think we have a great position there. And this notion that, you know, years ago we talked about work-life balance, sometimes it became kind of a joke, but work-life balance doesn't exist, really. It's like I'm working now and two seconds from now I'm going to be on my life because I'm interacting with my kid or whatever on text, back to work. And that, the only way that actually happens is if you can essentially be connected everywhere. Yeah. And, uh, and back to IOT, you know, what, what we're doing is, you know, you've heard about data center care where we wrap our around, arms around all the gear in a data center. We are doing the same thing, it'll be called campus care or something like that, but how do you provide that kind of integrated single point of contact experience for a campus network, right? So that you can, you can create that experience. So, so that moves us towards the IoT. So it is fuzzy IoT. for fu it's fuzzy because that's just the way the world is. It's fuzzy. It's it's, fuzzy. Can, it's blended. It's fuzzy. It's, that's it the way depends. we. That's, that's well, that's the way we work. I'm on the sidelines mm -hmm. watching my kids lacrosse yeah. game, and yeah. I answer an email in between halves. Right. So you know, exactly. is that bad or good? I guess exactly. Exactly. Product it just is. So I got to ask you. Why. I know we're getting close on time, but you brought up wireless, and you mentioned right. campus. Huge refresh opportunity in, in campus networking right now, mm -hmm. and wireless yeah. it seems to be the top item for all user experience. Yes. Is that on your, clearly on your roadmap right now in terms of delivery? Because I can imagine yeah. the refresh cycles from um, you know, yeah. remotely connecting well, with wire to wireless now. I mean, no, nobody's running wires anymore. Yeah. So, but yes, the refresh, the, 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 the first placement, stadiums, you know, places where, where you were lucky if you could have a cell phone signal. People want to show up and they want to watch the replays on their device and they, you know, it becomes an immersive experience all enabled through technology. All right, Scott, I know you got another appointment and really appreciate you taking the time. Great insight on IoT and as usual, great insight across the board. Thanks for sharing the insight here. All that big data coming in on the cube, fear on the services. Love the services led. I really believe that we are now in a services led infrastructure because the infrastructure is, is in different in every company, so for there's sure. no boilerplate anymore. It's harder for you, but to get, the, get those reference architectures, there'll be more of them. Uh, congratulations Thank on you. the split. Thank you. Scott Weller, Senior Vice President, General Manager, Technology Services Group here, Enterprise, HP Enterprise, HP Discovery. We'll be right back with more from theCUBE after this short break.